I'm Spencer with Code Monkeys, and this is a basic overview of our HIPAAforms API and WordPress plugin. Our solution was designed to help healthcare providers accept and manage secure HIPAA compliant web form submissions over their own websites without redirecting users off site and without the need for special web hosting. In order to use the HIPAAforms plugin for WordPress, you'll need a website built in WordPress, either Caldera or Gravity Forms installed, SSL enabled on your site and a license key from either a free or paid HIPAAforms subscription from HIPAAforms.online. Setup is simple. Install the plugin, add your license key, sign the BAA agreement included in the plugin, or you can send us your own, create a form in Caldera or Gravity Forms, and finally, select and configure the forms you want to be HIPAA compliant. Under the support tab in the HIPAAforms plugin interface, we have detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up both the plugin and the forms. We also have an FAQ section covering common questions and issues. If you need help, you can submit a support ticket from here as well. When a form is set as HIPAA compliant, our plugin will completely override the default Caldera or Gravity Forms submission process and replace the default submit button with our own. We also append a HIPAA privacy agreement checkbox with the ability to customize the agreement from the settings, an optional drag and draw signature field, and a HIPAA compliant badge at the bottom of the form. When a form is submitted, your entire form is encrypted, HTML and all. The encrypted form is then transmitted through our API to be stored on our encrypted HIPAA compliant databases. No data is ever stored on your own hosting server. While an email notification is sent letting you know a form was submitted, no protected health information is passed through the email. You do have the ability to pass identif identifier fields such as name, phone, email, and form name into the notification, but no other fields can be passed. From the HIPAA form settings, you have the ability to set what happens after a form is submitted, such as displaying a success message, redirecting to another page, or for advanced users, the ability to fire a custom JavaScript function on callback. If you have multiple locations, you have the ability to add a select field to your form with your locations so users can select which location they want. This can help you filter submitted forms from the dashboard as well as have an email notification sent to that specific location alerting them of the form submission. If you have multiple staff that need to access the submitted forms, you can also set specific forms to specific staff. Our plugin includes a custom HIPAA user role for staff that need to access the submitted forms but should not access other areas of your dashboard. While users with an administrator user role can access all forms and settings, users with the HIPAA role can be limited to only specific forms if needed. To access the submitted forms, log into your WordPress admin dashboard. We highly recommend you use strong passwords for users with admin or HIPAA user roles. Most companies have procedures on how passwords should be structured, so ensure you're following your company's guidelines. Once logged in, click on the HIPAA Forms menu link in the left menu. Whenever someone accesses the HIPAA Forms interface, it is automatically logged through our API with a timestamp, user ID, username, and email. The access logs can be viewed by clicking on the Log tab. From the initial submitted forms view, you'll see a list of your submitted forms with the newest listed first. Forms that have already been viewed are gray, while forms that have not yet been viewed are white. At the left of the list view, you'll see a few icons for things such as expand collapse, archive, destroy, notes, and assign to users. While both users with admin and HIPAA user roles will see the toggles, archive and notes icons, only users with the admin user role will see the destroy and user assignment icons. To the right of the list view, you'll see a button to generate a PDF version of the form. This option allows you to generate an encrypted password protected PDF version of your form that can be downloaded. While this is how you can generate encrypted password protected PDF versions of your form, there is another way to generate a non-encrypted and non-password protected PDF version of your forms that I'll explain in a little bit. To view a web view version of the form, click on the triangle icon at the left. This will expand the list view, pull the form down through our API, and decrypt it to be displayed in your browser. You'll also notice several subtabs to the left of the expanded view, including files, notes, history, and export. 
If you have the standard subscription with the file upload add-on and files have been uploaded with the form, these files will appear here. A temporary secure access link is generated allowing you to open and download the file. If you have a standard subscription plan, you and your staff also have the ability to attach notes to submitted forms. To remain HIPAA compliant, we do not allow submitted form data to be changed once submitted. However, the, uh, this notes feature allows you to indicate changes without actually changing the submitted data. This is also a useful tool for those with multiple staff members working with the same forms in order to communicate to each other. The notes option is not available with the free basic subscription option. A custom status feature was recently added to further help those with multiple staff working with the submitted forms. From the settings tab under the form status sub tab, you can choose to enable this feature and set custom status options. If this is enabled, you'll see a select option under the expanded submitted form with your custom status option. To give a submitted form a custom status, simply select the status in the select field and the status will display above the action icons in the list view. This allows your staff to quickly see the status of the forms without having to expand them and read the notes. The History tab displays that specific form's history, which can be useful during a HIPAA audit or backtracing purposes. While we log general access to the HIPAA forms interface, this history is strictly for the specific form. Anytime someone expands the form, generates a PDF version of the form, prints the form, archives the form, restores the form, sets a custom status or destroys the form. It's logged with that event along with a timestamp, user ID, username, and user email. Finally, the export section allows you to export a CSV of the raw form data. This is useful if you need to import the form data into something else like an EHR or EHM platform. The CSV file is generated completely through your browser and then saved to your hard drive. As this is done entirely through the client side or your browser, the file is not transmitted anywhere and therefore is not encrypted. Encryption would also cause issues with trying to import the file into other platforms. While there is no risk of the file being in transit, you should only export files if you are on a HIPAA compliant device that is login protected with an encrypted hard drive. Going back to the web view version of the form, uh, you'll see a, a print icon at the top right. This allows you to print the form or save a non-encrypted, non-password protected PDF version of the form. To save as a PDF, you can select that option from the print interface instead of printing. And we realize that the password protected PDF files can be a pain to work with and can cause issues of trying to import into other platforms such as EHRs or EHMs. Again, this should only be done if on a HIPAA compliant device with login protection and an encrypted hard drive to ensure you remain HIPAA compliant. Now let's take a look at uh, more of the settings options by clicking on the settings tab. While we've already covered the basic plugin settings and the new custom status option, let's go through some of the other options. First, let's look at the specific form settings options by clicking on the form settings sub tab. This is where you select which form builder you're using, Caldera or Gravity, and select what forms you want to be HIPAA compliant and configure the settings for the specific forms. If you do not have the four required fields set correctly with a first name field, last name field, email field, and phone field using the correct slug if using Caldera or class if using Gravity, you'll see a warning next to the form and you'll be unable to select it. To see what the form is missing, you can expand it by clicking on the triangle icon and it will tell you what fields you're missing. Once you've selected a form to be HIPAA compliant, you can click the triangle icon to expand the forms settings. If you want to show the drag and draw signature field on your form, you can check the box next, next to show signature, otherwise leaving it unchecked will not display the signature field. The Submit Success Handler section controls what happens after a form is successfully submitted. You can choose to show a message at the bottom of the form, redirect to another page or for advanced users fire a custom JavaScript function on callback. Under the who can view this form section you can select all admin and HIPAA users, only specific users or select users. 
If you select a specific users option, you can select which users should have access to the specific form. If you select the selected user option, you will need to add a select field to your form configured according to the setup instructions and then add the slug if using Caldera or class if using Gravity for this field. While we have a default notification option, you also have the option to set a custom notification for this specific form. Leaving this as default will pull the default notification settings while selecting custom will allow you to override the default options. The user permissions subtab allows you to set the permissions for the HIPAA user role. While some permissions are required in order for those users to access the dashboard, you can leave all options unchecked if you don't plan on using the HIPAA user role. The notification subtab is where you set the default notification email settings. While you can use magic tags for a few things here, that ability is extremely limited to prevent ePHI from being passed insecurely via email. You cannot use magic tags in the from or to email address settings and the email must be a valid format such as me at mydomain.com. If you receive an error when submitting a form saying the form was successfully submitted but there was an error sending an email, it's almost always an indication that you do not have a properly formatted email set here. We highly recommend that you also use an email address for the from email option using the same domain as your website. This will help prevent it from being flagged as phishing or spam. Under the Privacy subtab, you can set your custom HIPAA privacy statement. This is what displays in the HIPAA Privacy Agreement field that we append to the bottom of your form just before the Submit button. You can set this to open as a modal window pop-up or you can set this to link to another page. The last subtab here is for setting custom CSS to control how your submitted forms look. Here you can set custom CSS on the web view version of the form, the encrypted password protected PDF version of the form, and the print view. Make sure you read through the notes below the editor to see how to apply styles to specific versions of the form. Remember the CSS here only applies to submitted forms and does not affect your actual front facing form on your website. This overview video is the first in a series of new videos we're releasing. We'll be also releasing more detailed tutorial videos that will walk through plugin installation and setup, building your forms, troubleshooting common issues, managing your submitted forms, and general HIPAA, comp HIPAA compliance issues with things to watch out for and things to make sure you're doing to ensure you remain HIPAA compliant. We'll also be releasing a video specifically for web designers and digital marketers that work with healthcare clients and discussing things like business associates agreements, setting up HIPAA compliance, security procedures, self-assessments, audits, liability and errors and omissions insurance, and some general do's and do nots. As these new videos are released, they'll be posted both to the new section of our website as well as added to the support section of the plugin for easy access.